26, 27, 28. Yep, they're a little bit harder. Okay, you got to work a little bit more at these. 25, what was given to us? Cosecant of x equals negative square root of 3 over 5. Okay, so obviously I'll need the sine of x, the cosine of x, the all right, speak up. So then I know sine of x, tangent of x, cosecant of x, secant of x, cotangent of x. Now, you don't have to go in that order. Just make sure you get the other five listed. All right, on the quiz that we will take very soon, okay? On the quiz, ooh. Nah, or should we? Should we take a quiz on Friday over this no, stuff? No, no, no. Well, we'll come back next week and maybe take a quiz over some of this stuff. All right. So, um, if you have cosine, what quadrant are we in? Quadrant three. And you can tell that because it goes from pi to three pi over two. Okay. So that's quadrant three. All right. First thing you do is you have to flip this over. So the secant of x is the reciprocal of that, which is 5 over negative square root of 3. Can we leave square root of 3 on the bottom? No. So we multiply top and bottom by square root of 3. So the secant is 5 square root of 3 over 3, and it is negative because we're in the third quadrant, and secant is always the same as cosine. Okay. Um... Cosine works with sine in a Pythagorean identity. So sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x equals 1. So sine squared of x plus negative square root of 3 over 5 squared equals 1. Sine squared of x plus 3 25ths equals 1. What do I do to each side? Subtract 3 25ths. 25 25ths minus 3 25ths is 22 25ths. Then take the square root. So the sine of x is the square root of 22 over 5. Now the cosecant is a reciprocal of that. So the cosecant of x. Uh-oh. Recording stopped. Well, uh, I don't know if it stopped or not. Oh, well. So we flip this over 5 over square root of 22. So then what do we do to the top and bottom? Multiply by square root of 22. So the cosecant of x is 5 square root of 22 over 22. And this is negative. Sine is negative. Tangent and cotangent are positive. Now, cosine over sine is cotangent, right? Cotangent equals cosine over sine. So cosine is negative square root of 3 over 5. Sine is negative square root of 22 over 5. If we multiply top and bottom by 5, that gets rid of the 5s. So it's negative square root of 3 over negative square root of 22. So if we multiply top and bottom by square root of 22... It's square root of 66 over 22. Um, tangent is sine over cosine, which is square root of 22 over 5 over square root of 3 over 5. Fives cancel if we multiply by 5 and multiply by square root of 3. So it's the square root of 66 over 3. Does that match your answers? Twenty six. What's the problem? Over 
Secant of x equals negative 4 squared of 5 over 5, and we're in quadrant 2. All right, so you got sine of x we need, cosine of x, tangent of x, cosecant of x, cotangent of x. All right, so if we flip over the secant, um, cosine of x equals 5 over negative 4 square root of 5. Can't leave square root of 5 on the bottom, so we multiply top and bottom by square root of 5. So we get 5 square root of 5 over negative 4 times 5. Everybody catch that. Now, what can we do on the top and bottom? Now, on the bottom, you could say, well, take negative 4 times 5 and you get negative 20. Well, yep, you can do that. But still, you have to do something on the top and bottom. What do you have to do? Reduce. The fives cancel. So cosine is really negative square root of 5 over 4. Okay. Now that's a nicer looking number than that. So we're going to use this and go sine square root of x plus cosine square root of x equals 1. So sine square root of x plus negative square root of 5 over 4 squared equals 1. Sine squared of x plus 5 sixteenths equals 1. Sine squared of x equals what? What's 1 minus 5 sixteenths? 11 sixteenths. Take square root of each side. Sine of x equals plus or minus. Ooh. Yeah, but not plus or minus. It's just square root of 11 over 4. All right. Let's do tangent. Tangent is what over what? Sine over cosine. So it's the square root of 11 over 4 over negative square root of 5 over 4. Fours cancel. And multiply it by square root of 5 on top and bottom. So it's the square root of 55 over 5. Cotangent is cosine over sine. So it's negative square root of 5 over 4 over square root of 11 over 4. Fours cancel and multiply by square root of 11 on top and bottom. So it is negative square root of 55 over over 11. And this is a negative as well. And cosecant's the reciprocal of sine, which is 4 square root of 11 over 11. We good there. Okay. 27. Um, what do we got? Oh, I like it when they're just normal numbers. What quadrant are we in? No, and then it says, and negative pi over 2 is less than negative 2. Yeah, so we're trying to figure out what quadrant we're in. It's between negative pi over 2 and 0, right? So we're in quadrant 4. There we go. All right, so we're in quadrant 4. So that makes sine negative, cosine positive, tangent negative, um, cosecant negative, secant positive, and there we go. So the easy one here is tangent. What's tangent going to be just by looking at that? Negative three. It's just reciprocal tangent, cotangent. Okay. Now, tangent is a, in a Pythagorean identity with what? Secant. Tangent squared of x plus 1 equals secant squared of x. So negative 3 squared plus 1 equals secant squared of x. So 9 plus 1 equals secant squared of x. 10 equals secant squared of x. Take square root. Secant of x equals square root of 10. What's the reciprocal of the square root of 10? 1 over square root of 10, right? Multiply by top and bottom by square root of 10. So the cosine of x is square root of 10 over 10. Uh, let's take cotangent. 
and say cotangent square root of x plus 1 equals, wait, I already got secant, right? Or cosecant, yeah, let's do cosecant, yep, cosecant square root of x. There we go. Okay, so negative 1 third squared plus 1 equals cosecant squared. 1 ninth plus 1 equals cosecant squared. 1 ninth plus 1, 1 ninth plus 9 ninths. 10 ninths equals cosecant squared. Take square root. Square root 10 over 3. So sine is 3 over square root 10. Multiply top and bottom by square root 10. So it's 3 square root 10 over 10. So sine is negative. Cosecant is negative. Jake Lehman, Kate Klein, Ashley Nielsen, Lydia Nelson. 28. What do we got? Square root 3. 0 is less than x is less than 5 over 2. So it's quadrant 1. All right. Quadrant 1, everything's positive. I love it when quadrant 1. Sine of x equals cosine of x equals tangent of x equals um, cosecant is already done. Secant of x equals cotangent of x equals. All right. Reciprocal of cosecant is sine. 1 over square root of 3 is sine. So we multiply top and bottom by square root of 3. So sine of x is square root of 3 over 3. Cosecant squared of x equals cotangent squared of x plus 1. So square root of 3 squared plus or equals cotangent squared of x plus 1. So 3 equals cotangent squared of x plus 1. Subtract 1. 2 equals cotangent squared of x. Take square root. Cotangent of x equals square root of 2. Trust me? Okay. Reciprocal of square root 2 is square root 2 over 2. Trust me? Okay. Um, cosine or secant? Ah, uh, Let's just do cosine. Sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x equals 1. Square root of 3 over 3 squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So 3 ninths plus cosine squared equals 1. Move 9 ninths minus 3 ninths is 6 ninths. So cosine squared of x equals 6 ninths. Take square root. Cosine of x equals square root of 6 over 3. And this is 3 square root of 6. Oh, that'll be reduced. So secant of x equals 3 square root of 6 over 6. And 3 and 6 reduced down to 2. So it's a square root of 6 over 2. Everything work? Okay, so those were the hard ones. 29. 29, read to me, please. Sine of negative x, cotangent of negative x. So sine of negative x is negative sine of x. Cotangent of negative x is negative cotangent of x. So it's negative sine of x times negative Cosine of x over sine of x. A negative times a negative is a positive. So it's just cosine of x. 30. S sine of y plus sine of negative y. Is that right? That's 
secant of negative x minus secant of x. Secant of negative x is just secant of x minus secant of x is 0. 31, sine of y plus negative sine of y equals 0. 32. which is a cosine of x plus cosine of x, which is 2 cosine of x. 33. So this is a sine of x over cosine of x plus negative sine of x over cosine of x, which equals 0, right? 34. So it's cosine of x over negative sine of x minus cosine of x over sine of x, which is negative 2 cosine of x over sine of x. Thirty-five. So it's 1 plus sine of x times 1 minus sine of x, which is 1 minus sine squared of x, which is cosine squared of x. 36. 1 minus cosine of negative x times 1 plus cosine of x. So it's 1 minus cosine of x times 1 plus cosine of x, which is 1 minus cosine squared of x, which is sine squared of x, right? Okay, so that takes care of that assignment. The next one is 37. Read 37 to me. The So it's negative sine of b times cosine of b times 1 over sine of b. These two cancel, so it's negative cosine of b, right? And then 38, what do we have? So this is negative uh, sine of b over cosine of b times 1 over sine of b, and that's negative, times cosine of b. So the cosines of b's cancel, the sines of b's cancel, and the negatives cancel to be 1. Okay, so then 61. We have 1 minus something, right? 1 minus 1 over cosine of x. Okay, there's more than one way to skin a rabbit. There's more than one way to do this problem. Okay? You could get a common denominator and go cosine squared of x over cosine squared of x minus 1 over cosine squared of x, which equals cosine squared of x minus 1 over cosine squared of x which equals negative sine squared of x over cosine squared of x. Or you could go 1 minus, um, this would be secant squared of x, which is negative tangent squared of x, which is negative sine squared of x over cosine squared of x. Either way, gets us there. Oops. 62.
What do we got? So when you see anything to the fourth power, if you can factor something out, that's what you want to do. So you take out a sine squared of x, and you get sine squared of x minus 1. And secant is 1 over cosine of x. Well, sine squared of x minus 1 is negative cosine squared of x. So you have sine squared of x times negative cosine squared of x. And then if you multiply by cosine on the top and the bottom, because to get this is an improper imp fraction, or a, yeah, whatever, uh, fraction. So if you multiply top and bottom by cosine, that cancels. So you get negative out front, sine squared of x, cosine cubed of x would be what we would expect as simplified form. <coughs> 63. What do we got? If we take out a negative 1, we get tangent squared of x plus 1 over secant squared of x. Tangent squared of 1 is secant squared of x. Secant squared of x over secant squared of x cancels to be negative 1 in the end. Finally, number 64. Okay, so it's like this, right? Something like that. So you factor out a cosine of x. You have sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x over 1 over cosine of x. What's sine squared plus cosine squared? 1. So it's cosine of x over 1 over cosine of x, which is cosine squared of x. Because you multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator, or you multiply by the denominator of the denominator. All right. So I'm going to stop that.